Hi, and welcome to the first tutorial of the EasyLogic plugin. In this tutorial, we will show you how to take a scene with basic animation and convert it into a transition logic scene using EasyLogic. This is the scene that we have created. It has some graphic design, data elements, and an in animation. Before we start with the transition logic, let's break down the scene and understand how it is built. We have the graphic cards, four text elements for the show details, and an image that is a cover poster of the show. For the transition logic, we will want to be able to change each of the data elements, the show time, day title, and cover image. I will show you how we can control each data element separately. Okay, so let's begin converting this scene. I will start by creating a structure in the scene tree. The EasyLogic plugin consists of two plugins. The first plugin is the EasyLogic master plugin, and the second is the EasyLogic layer plugin. Each scene created with EasyLogic will have one EasyLogic master plugin and several EasyLogic layer plugins. In general, we will have one EasyLogic layer plugin per data element in our scene. We first drag the EasyLogic layer plugin into our scene tree. We place the master plugin on a separate container as it contains the logic elements but does not contain any visual elements. We will rename this layer to master, just for reference. The master plugin has four actions, trigger in, trigger out, trigger change, and create layers. We will cover the three trigger actions in a more advanced tutorial. Let's start preparing the data in our scene. As I described earlier, each data element, the text and images in the scene, or any other graphic element that represents data that can be changed by the CG operator, is described as a data layer. To keep the scene clean and well structured, I will create a new group that will hold all the data layers of the scene, and I will name it data layers. and then I will add child containers for each of the data elements in the scene. I can now add the EasyLogic layer plugin on each of these containers. Once we place the EasyLogic layer plugin on the container, it will receive a unique name. We can open the plugin and change the name field to easily reference our data layers. This will also update the container name. The description field in the EasyLogic Layer plugin is just for your reference. Now that I have my EasyLogic layers in my scene tree, I can take data elements that were already created in the scene and drag them to the respective EasyLogic Layer container. We now have a clean separation of the graphics and the data in my example scene. This structure is not required, but it is a good habit and will make future changes to the scene a breeze. Now we can go back to the master plugin and press the Create Layers button. This is where all the magic happens. As you can see, some changes appear in our scene tree. The first thing you notice is that an animation has been added to the master container that has now been renamed to EasyLM by the master plugin. And when we open the Data Layers container, we see that each of our EasyLogic layers also have animations. The EasyLogic plugin has created a new director called EasyLogic that has a child director for each of our EasyLogic layers. And each EasyLogic layer director has three default directors, In, Out, and Change. In this tutorial, I will show you how we will use the Change director to apply a change animation to our data elements. In addition to the EasyLogic layer directors, we also have the general opener and closer directors. In a moment I will show you how we will use these two directors to add the in and out animations of all the elements in our scene. And finally, we have the EasyLogic master director that was created by the EasyLogic plugin. This directory contains all the transition logic animation for our scene. This is all handled by the plugin, so there is no need to change anything in this director. So let's get started with creating our animations. As you saw in the beginning of the tutorial where I demonstrated the scene, the scene already has an in animation that was created for us. We only want this animation to play when the scene is taken on air for the first time. So we need to drag the animation into the opener director under the EasyLogic director. I can now play the scene to make sure that the in animation is working. Now I want to add the out animation of the entire scene. I only want this animation to happen when the takeout command is sent by the CG operator. 
We don't have an out animation prepared for us, so I'm going to use the in animation played in reverse. First, I will copy the in animation from the opener director into the closer director. And then I can reverse the animation. I can now play the opener director and the closer director separately to preview how my scene animations look. In this example, we have used a predefined in animation and reversed it for the out animation. However, you can create any animations you want under the opener and closer directors. Now that we have finished creating the opening and closing animations of our scene, I want to show you how to create the change animation for the show title. Let's start by clicking on the animation of the show title container. Our show title director that was created by the EasyLogic plugin has been selected. The director name is derived from the name that we added to the EasyLogic layer plugin for this container. Let's create a simple fade in, fade out animation for this text. I will first drag the alpha plugin onto the show title container. And now, with the change director under the show title director, I will create an animation from 100% alpha. to 0% and back to 100%. If we look at the change director in the stage, we can see that we have an alpha channel animation. The EasyLogic plugin also adds an action keyframe to the change director. We will explain this in more detail in another tutorial, but in general, this is a trigger to update the data in the scene, so it is best to place the keyframe anywhere in your timeline where the data is not visible on air. So in this example, I will place it when the alpha animation is at 0%. So now we have the opening and closing animations of our scene, and a change animation on the show title. Before we move on to the other data elements in our scene, let's have a look at how our scene works in Trio. If we go into the project view, we can see that our scene is saved as Squeeze Tutorial 01. I will open the EasyLogic Master plugin and press the Create Layers button again. Some more magic has happened. I now have a subfolder called Squeeze Tutorial 01, which is the name of my scene and underscore layers. In this folder, I have a foreground scene for each of the EasyLogic layer plugins in my scene. We can now close Viz Artist and open Trio. I can now import my foreground scene. Because we have only created a change animation for the show title, I will only import the show title foreground scene. So let's start populating the scene with data and saving them as pages. I will start with Breaking Bad, save the page, then we will promote Suits. Save that as a new page, and the last show we will promote is New Girl, and we save that as a page. We now have three pages in our show playlist. Let's clean up the renderer so that we can see what happens. So when I do a direct take on the first page, you can see that the in animation is played and my scene is taken on air. Now I will do a direct take on the next page. And as you can see, the change animation that we created for the show title is played on the data element that has changed. And I can do the same on the third page. We now have a full transition logic scene. When I do a takeout on the scene, you can see the animations that we created in the closer director is played and the graphics are taken off air. Let's see that again. This time, I will first take in the suits page. As you can see, the scene is not on air, so the opener animation is played and the scene shows the data we defined in the page. I can then jump to any other page and the change animation will be played. When I take out the scene, the closer animation is played. In the next tutorial, we will see how we can create change animations for the other data elements in our scene, and how we can manage the foreground scenes using combo pages.